Okay. Uh, may uh, I help you? Well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm here for an interview. Uh, interview? Uh, yes, for a job. Uh, photo mapping, uh, intelligence, uh, biomedical, communications? Actress. Actress. Yes. You see, I got this message from my answering service that my agent wanted me to come here to this address. Well, this, this must be the wrong address. Or maybe my agent is trying to tell me something. Uh, sorry, miss. Oh, it's all right. Thank you. Oh! Oh, my gosh! Oh, I'm so sorry. Here, let me help you. Yeah, I I'll manage. Yeah. Uh, could you please tell me if there just happens to be a Brian James in this building? Oh, is your interview with Major James? Major James? Uh, your name is? Anne Marie. Uh, one moment. Uh, Major James? Uh, yes, sir. There's a Miss Anne Marie here to see you. Uh, yes, sir. He's expecting you. Just through those doors in the first office on your right. Thank you. On the right. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Who is she? She may be the one who helps us put the first woman on the moon. That girl? You're the girl from the Gilliam and Norris office. Yes, sir, uh, Major James, I am. I'm uh, Anne Marie. Smile. Smile? Yes, yeah, smile. Oh, oh. Not quite so forced. Well, it's, it would help a lot if I knew what I was smiling about. I mean, I don't even know why I was sent here. About face. What about it? No, I mean, turn around. Oh. Weren't you briefed by your agent? Well, no. Uh, he just uh, gave me this address and told me to ask for you. But even though I think that the Air Force does some really marvelous things, I, I don't think it's for me. I mean, I'm very patriotic, but I'm too short. And besides, I already have a vocation. I'm an actress. Yes, I know you're an actress. I've seen you. Off-Broadway in something or other. Oh. Was it Pearls Before Swine? Could have been. I'm in charge of setting up a new recruitment campaign for the Air Force. I was a mountain girl, remember? And I was lonely and, and desperate. When? In Pearls Before Swine. No, I don't remember. You don't remember me in the part at all? Vaguely. Well, if you don't remember me at all, then why did you want to see me? Well, I'm not interested in your work as an actress. What I need is an image. You're not interested. I need a look. Miss Air Force. I was in all three acts. Sit down, please. I need a young woman who is charming, capable, and programmed for the challenge, the excitement of space and tomorrow. Well, if your memory of me is that dim, then what makes you think I can be all those things? I'm going to make the public believe that you are. I'm with Pyle, Powell, and Petrov, public relations. Charisma by the yard. Then what are you doing masquerading in that uniform? Air Force Reserve. This is my annual tour. My project is to sell the Women's Air Force. Helping in the advanced studies for manned space flights. The Russians put a female up there, and so can we. Me? I haven't even been to Rhode Island. And I devoutly believe in seeing America first. We're interested in getting women into the space program who have imagination, intelligence, and capability. 
Yes, well, well, that's very nice, Major, but it seems to me that I'm not what you have in mind. We're not really interested in putting you on the moon. You're going to pose for recruiting posters and appear in television spots. Oh, Major, I really don't think I can. It's out of our hands. You have already been approved by the Pentagon. I have? You will make personal appearances at most of the major bases, shoot an indoctrination film. Well, I'll give you the itinerary over lunch. Lunch? Yes, lunch. You like seafood? Yes, I do, but Major, believe me, you are not going to influence me over an elaborate lunch. I assure you, I'm not trying to influence you. I just happen to be hungry. <laughs> Come on, get the lead out. This is so beautiful. But I thought you said we were going to lunch. We are. We'll be there in 10 minutes. We'll be where? The best seafood restaurant in the country. Oh, is it in New Jersey? New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana? You're kidding. I never kid about seafood. But I have to be back in New York this afternoon. You will be. But you had no right. I wanted to have dinner ready by the time you got home. Honey, it's almost 7.30. Oh, well, it's an hour earlier in New Orleans. What has New Orleans got to do with it? Now, I'll have dinner ready in nothing flat. You just relax. Where? Oh, well, uh, lean against something. Honey, where were you this afternoon? Oh, my gosh, the stove's disconnected. Everything in this apartment's disconnected. Look, it was your idea for me to redecorate in the first place. Oh, Donald, it's a little inconvenient now, but by the time I get everything fixed up, you won't know this place. I don't know it now. Honey, you were supposed to meet a carpenter here this afternoon. Oh, boy, I knew there was something. Yeah, he left. He said maybe he can get back in six months or so. Oh, I can always get another carpenter. The question is, how am I going to fix dinner on a disconnected stove? Okay, well, look, I'm not hungry. Well, neither am I. I had an enormous lunch at this great restaurant. Where? New Orleans. Never heard of it. You never heard of New Orleans? Where is it? On the Gulf of Mexico. You, you, you mean New Orleans, Louisiana? Mm -hmm. That's why I was a little late. You had lunch in New Orleans, Louisiana? We went down in a jet. We'd have been back a lot earlier, except Major James had to stop off at Scranton. <laughs> Major James? Oh, Donald, we made our approach from the north and we could see the sun setting on the Great Lakes. It was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Major James, New Orleans, the Great Lakes. Donald, will you stop repeating everything I say? <laughs> you know, you know, I could be writing a series of articles on the changing face of Hong Kong or the changing face of Florence, and I like the fettuccine in Florence, but no. I talked the editor into letting me write a series of articles on the changing face of Manhattan. And why? <laughs> so I could be with you. But what happens? You're going to be buzzing all over the map with some plane jockey. And what about my apartment? Donald, I said I'd redecorate your apartment, and I'm going to. Your comfort and peace of mind means a great deal to me. I'm glad. But I also care about putting the first American woman on the moon. Is that so wrong? No, no. I've given that some thought myself on occasion. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you mean. You do, too, but I love you anyway. Well, I'm glad somebody does. Major James certainly doesn't. Oh? How do you know? He ignores me. Saw me in a play, doesn't even remember me. Treats me as if I was five years old. I don't know why he picked me to begin with. Mm-hmm. Why, it is really annoying. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Just another approach. What do you mean, just another approach? This is the old saw me in a play, doesn't remember me routine. <laughs> oh, Donald, don't be ridiculous. If there's one thing I can tell, it's a routine. And believe me, Major James is giving me no routine. He wouldn't give me the right time. <laughs> what time is it? What difference does it make? I knew it. Big smile, please. <laughs> thank you. Very good. Oh, thank you. Okay, Spellman, that wraps it up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, let's see. We have a press conference in an hour, and then we go... Did I, uh, do all right? 
fine. Thank you very much. You got this job because you're a professional. You do something I don't like, and I'll tell you about it. Now, after the press conference, we're going to the Veterans Hospital. At 5 o'clock, we take off for Florida. Florida? You're taping a TV interview on the base there. But I'm expected. Donald's waiting for me. The boyfriend. Can't he struggle along without you for a few hours? Look, you don't understand. There are a lot of decisions that have to be made. You know, it strikes me that you're being a bit overprotective. Why don't you let him make a few on his own? Look, you don't understand. Besides, you see, I... we'll be back here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? I can't spend the night with you. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, that, that, that's not what I, I meant. That's what you said. <laughs> Well, let's get the lead out. Okay. We're the painters. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, well, come on in. Uh, listen, can you just sort of work around? I've got a deadline to meet, and I seem to do better here than at the office. What line of work you in? Uh, I'm a writer. A writer? We get paid in advance? Yeah. Oh, it's nothing personal. It's just that most writers are slow pay, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, you just start anywhere and paint fast. You know what I mean? Which tone did you decide on? Tone? Yeah, Sahara Dusk or Harvest Haze? Well, I, I, I thought that was decided between you and Miss Marie. Well, me and the lady narrowed it down from 200 to 2. As she said she'd tell us which one when we got here. Uh, well, uh, she went to Florida last night. Florida. Yeah, but, but she'll be back in the morning. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Donald? Oh, oh, Ann, honey, listen, the painters are here, and they want to know whether you decided on Sahara Dusk or Harvard Haze. Sahara Dusk or Harvest Haze? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I can't really, um, decide until I see the two shades with the draperies. Are they there yet? They haven't arrived yet. Where are you calling from? Chicago! Chicago? You said you were going to Florida. Well, uh, we, we did, but we're coming back a different route. Uh, listen, Donald. Uh, uh, don't worry. I'll, I'll see you in a little while. Bye. Okay. She's in Chicago. Chicago. They're coming back that way. From Florida? Yeah. <laughs> you sure we got paid in advance? Yeah. <laughs> Donald? Donald, I thought I'd better call you. And where are you? Well, um, I'm in Hudson's Bay. Honey, the drapes are here. The painters have to know. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, but, uh... Well, there's a weather front between here and New York, so so we have to fly in by way of Greenland. Greenland? Greenland? Yeah. Uh, okay, honey, all right. Bye-bye. Well, look, I'm, I'm sorry to hold you up this way. At these prices, we don't mind waiting. if I asked you a direct question? Not if you don't mind getting a direct answer. Why did you pick me for Miss Air Force if you don't like me? You were right for the job. Liking you had nothing to do with it. Well, it would make things a bit more pleasant. You've got Donald. He likes you so much, he lets you make all his decisions for him. Donald happens to be a very self-reliant person. He doesn't need me nor anybody else to make up his mind for him. Ann? Can you hear me? Ann? One moment, sir. AF4 to J29. Do you read me, J29? We read you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ann? Can you hear me? Ann? Donald? Donald, where are you? In my apartment. In what used to be my apartment. Why? What's the matter? Honey, I can't make these decisions, and they're all after me for some kind of an answer. All? Who all? Painters, carpenters, drapery hangers. 
carpet layers, upholsterers. I'm surrounded. Harvest haze or Sahara dusk. Nine-inch shells or ten-inch shells. Silk line drapes or nylon. Rubber padding or synthetic. Recover the chair in pomegranate or puce. Donald, it, it's harvest haze. Uh, the use of ten-inch shelves, silk lining, rubber padding, and pomegranate. What, what, what size shelves? Uh, she said ten-inch. Oh, thank you. And, and what about the chair? Pomegranate. How, how do you spell that? Pomegranate. P-O-M-E-G-R-A-N-A-T-E. -E. Pomegranate. Thank you. He's going to wish he'd made those shells at least 12 inches. Hi. Hi. Well, that's amazing. You've hardly aged at all. <laughs> It's only been a couple of days. Yeah, well, I feel ten years older. You're working too hard. I haven't been able to work at all. All I've been doing is a lot of walking and thinking. Have you been here long? Yeah, I've been here all afternoon, and boy, did I get a lot done. You're really going to be surprised. Please, no more surprises. Where are you going? Oh, Donald, we're taking off for San Francisco in an hour and a half. But I just got here. I know, I'm sorry. But I'll be finished in a couple of days. Bye. Give my regards to your Major James. My Major James? He doesn't even know I'm alive. Oh, yeah? Still giving you the old not paying any attention to you? Don't know you're alive routine, huh? Yeah, well, I'd love to just stand here and argue with you, but the Air Force is waiting. Oh, God. I'll be here and there'll be a star in the window. <laughs> I thought the idea was for me to recruit some other woman to go to the moon. We need a picture of you wearing it, so stop complaining. I'm not complaining. I was only wondering how long I had to stay inside this... <laughs> Operator? Operator, I'd like to place a person-to-person -person call... Uh, to person-to-person -person call to San Francisco, California. Yes, thank you. No, no, it cannot wait. I have to ask her a very important question right now. And... Oh, Donald! Donald, where are you? What are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, lying in a, in a centrifuge and I'm, I'm spinning around. <laughs> Is he in there with you? Oh, Donald, don't be ridiculous. He's, he's outside, watching me. Sure, sure. The old gotcha spinning around in a centrifuge outside watching you routine. Well, look, I'm sorry to interrupt your fun and games, but I cannot find my newspaper clippings. What? What clippings? The clippings I've been saving for years and years. The ones on which I was going to base my article on the changing face of Manhattan. Now, honey, they were in a box in the bottom desk drawer. And now they're gone. Oh! Oh, you mean a box of old pieces of newspaper? Right. Have you seen them? Donald, that was not in the bottom desk drawer. That was on the floor. I, I don't care where they were. Where are they now? You did what with them? On the present site of the terminal stood the architectural dare... Continued page 23. 
Page 23. Page 23. I can't believe it. Page 23. Page 23. Page 23. Milliken Building. <laughs> Thank you so much, Major, for bringing me home. My pleasure. Oh, well, thank you. I'd like to apologize if I've seemed too abrupt or impersonal. Oh, no, you, you haven't been too impersonal at all. Oh, I must have. I know how I am when I'm under pressure. <laughs> Believe me, Major, you have absolutely nothing to apologize for. So now that it's over, I'd like to take this opportunity to say... <laughs> Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye? And good luck. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, how do you like that? The old goodbye and good luck routine. Hi. Hi. Well, how do you like it? You did a great job. But I was right, wasn't I? What? About the Sahara dusk and the harvest haze? I mean about Major Bryan. He brought you home personally, correct? Correct. Uh-huh. He carried your suitcases upstairs. You asked him to come in and offered him a sandwich, you know, being polite, right? Right. And then, ba-boom. Ba-boom? Yeah, he made his move, right? Right. I knew it. I knew it! I told you I was a pretty good judge of human nature. Well, you can imagine me. I was never so embarrassed in my whole life. You should have seen me. First, first he gets me over by my fireplace. And out of the clear blue, he says, just a minute, baby. And then the next thing I know, practically like a, like a stranglehold. And so I, I somehow I just managed to, to break free. And I, I ran over and I got the, the couch between us. And I said, Major. Very indignant-like. And the next thing I know, he whirls behind me, and he starts coming closer and closer to me. And I was just about to scream, and then I remembered, oh, my gosh, the neighbors. So I ran as fast as I could to the door. But then he was faster, and he kept coming closer and, and closer to me. And then you can imagine what he did. Never touched you, huh? Never laid a finger on me. <laughs> you knew what? The old never touched you, never laid a finger on you routine. <laughs> 